At the time of Holy Communion, we will give you further instruction. At the end of Mass, we ask you to exit through the main doors at the back of the church. Our presider is Father Critch, and our opening hymn is number 302 in the Catholic Book of Worship, 302. Please stand. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And good morning, everyone. Good morning. And to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries today, as we prepare for the coming of Christ at Christmas, let us ask the Lord's forgiveness for the times we have failed to see the presence and the face of Christ in those we meet every day, especially those in need and those marginalized. We ask the Lord's forgiveness for that. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Stir up your power, we pray, O Lord, and come, that with you to protect us, we may find rescue from the pressing dangers of our sins, and with you to set us free, we may be found worthy of salvation, who lives and reigns with the God, the Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God says this, Shall not Lebanon in a very little while become a fruitful field, and the fruitful field be regarded as a forest? On that day, the deaf shall hear the words of a scroll, and out of their gloom and darkness 
the eyes of the blind shall see. The meek shall obtain fresh joy in the Lord, and the neediest people shall exult in the Holy One of Israel. For the tyrant shall be no more, and the scoffer shall cease to be. All those alert to do evil shall be cut off. Those who cause a person to lose a lawsuit, who set a trap for the arbiter in the gate, and without grounds deny justice to the one in the right. Therefore, thus says the Lord who redeemed Abraham concerning the house of Jacob. No longer shall Jacob be ashamed. No longer shall his face grow pale. For when he sees his children, the work of my hands in his midst, they will sanctify my name. They will sanctify the Holy One of Jacob and will stand in awe of the God of Israel. And those who err ear in spirit will come to understand that those who grumble will accept instruction. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The refrain for the responsorial psalm, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. 
Gospel according to Matthew. As Jesus went on from his own village, two men who were blind followed him, crying loudly, Have mercy on us, son of David. When he entered the house, the men who were blind came to him, and Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I'm able to do this? They said to him, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes and said, According to your faith, let it be done to you. And their ear, their eyes were opened. Then Jesus sternly ordered them, See that no one knows of this. But they went away and spread the news about him throughout that district. The Gospel of the Lord. As our days continue to get shorter and we experience the darkest time of the year, the theme of light appears in the readings again today. God, speaking through Isaiah, declares, The eyes of the blind will see. In the responsorial psalm, we all declare, The Lord is my light and my salvation. In the gospel reading, Jesus heals two blind men, bringing them from darkness to light, because they believed. They may have been physically blind, but they certainly weren't spiritually blind, because they followed Jesus. They had the eyes of faith that Jesus would heal them would cure them. We too can be blind to the Lord's presence to us, especially in times of great loss and pain. We fail to recognize him even though he is journeying beside us. We can also be blind to the face of Jesus and the people and events of our lives every day. We can, we, we can be blind when we fail to see Christ in the poor and the needy beside us. Like he did for the blind man, Jesus calls upon us and asks us, do you believe that I can bring you out of darkness, that I can bring good out of this evil? There can be areas of blindness in our lives that we do need to be healed from. We all struggle with weakness and disability of one kind or another because like the two blind men, there are many ways in which we are blind, we are broken, we are vulnerable. The example of the two men encourages us to always be persistent in our prayer, to keep turning to the Lord in prayer, even when the Lord appears not to be listening to us. Our prayer of faith will never go unanswered. So this morning we ask God, who is our light, to open our eyes so that we too may come to see his goodness, even when it is to be found in places and in people where we might least expect it, even in places like a simple animal manger. Our prayers of intercession today, we pray for Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Archbishop Peter, and all those who lead and guide our church. We pray for God's guidance, the Holy Spirit's guidance for them. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the Holy Spirit, the guidance of our leaders, national and international. They they may find ways to bring warring and people together who are at war with one another. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who are suffering adversely because of this pandemic, those isolated and alone, those experience illness from this disease. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all the sick recommended to our prayers, those in their homes, hospitals, those at home, being cared for at home, and for all caregivers, for God's strength for them. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who have died. We pray especially for those in the quiet of our hearts today, our own family members, friends, relatives that have died that we would like to mention to the Lord today. We pray to the Lord. 
God, our Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear and answer all the prayers in our hearts. For we make them in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, O Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Wash away our iniquity, O Lord, cleanse us of our sin. my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Let us pray. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humbly, humble prayers and offerings, and since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the loneliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which you now we dare to hope. And so with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew falls, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, O Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, the clergy, and all your people. Remember all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. John the Baptist, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs with them to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <coughs> through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. with confidence to our Heavenly Father in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, I said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And we share the peace of Christ now with one another. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be saved. A prayer for those who are unable to receive Holy Communion at this time. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you 
as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. To ensure that the reception of Holy Communion takes place in a safe and respectful manner, we ask that you please follow these instructions. Instead of individually replying amen upon receiving the host, there will be one general attestation of amen before distribution begins. Please remain standing in your pew until invited forward by an usher. Ensure your face mask is correctly worn before coming forward and maintain a two meter social distance in the communion line. As you approach the front of the line, sanitize your hands before receiving communion. Bow toward the host. In silence, receive the host in your hands. Step aside to consume the host. Return to your pew as directed by the ushers. Those unable to receive Holy Communion in the hand may come forward to receive a blessing. The body of Christ. Amen. The communion hymn is number 6.1 in the Celebrate in Song, Bread for the World, 6.1. <clears throat>
microphone dies the last minute. May Almighty God bless all of us today in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And just a reminder that uh, for confessions like today at 11 to 12 and tomorrow at 11 to 12, we have adoration and confessions. And uh, tomorrow night before Christmas, we have a special evening, more evening. That's between uh, 7 uh, and 9. And Saturday night, we have uh, adoration and beautiful Eucharistic music uh, here in the church from 7 to 9 tomorrow evening, as well as confessions between 7 and 9. Okay, it's just a reminder. Go into peace of Christ. Our closing hymn, number 480, Amazing Grace, 480 in the CBW. <laughs>